Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whichever great part of this planet you are in right now. Thank you for stopping by and giving me your time. I'm going to give you guys a super, super treat today with What's in Bloom. It's always my favorite to show. It's what I have in my greenhouse, what's currently blooming. And I got to tell you, right after the cold snap, a lot of things decided to come out and show their colors. So guys, I want to tell you before I start, because I haven't had enough time to, um, to give you guys uh, the announcement, but we will be having a live show this, this week on Friday. Um, I don't know what date that will be. I think it's a 28th or 27th. <laughs> I'll put it under there as I usually do. Uh, Josh and I are getting together. There will be another uh, Ophi's Orchid and Plant show this weekend. So when J Josh comes down, he's all the way up in Jacksonville, Florida. So when he comes down to Miami, we take advantage of the, of the opportunity, of the moment, and we try to do a live for you guys. We already did one and it was awesome. So I hope to see more of you guys at the live. It was a lot of fun speaking to you guys directly. Some of your questions were awesome. And I, I think it's a great, great way to learn more about orchid care. So if you guys are interested, please join us on Friday, pick our brains. That's what we're there for. And let's have a good time. So without further ado, let's flip this camera around and show you some amazing, amazing blooms. See you on the flip side. All right, folks, so let's start here where we usually start, which is right in front of my terrace where I keep a lot of my cattleyas and newcomers. And we're gonna start with this one right here. This is a beautiful zygopetalum. And I got this at Brethren's, Brethren Orchids. Sorry for the focus uh, issue, there we go. And this is the name, Zygonesia. Sinosure bluebirds. And these guys were all over the Tamiami Fair. There were so many of these everywhere. Everywhere you turned around, you found them. And they were absolutely beautiful. Now, this is the situation with some of these uh, orchids that are usually hard to find. Sometimes you see an explosion of them in the shows. You know, you'll see them in every booth. And then the following show, you don't see them at all. So when you see this kind of beauty, you know, go for it don't think twice take it with you because it's not often you see this kind of flower or this type of orchid so when you see those kind of rarities that you're like wow i haven't seen this before and even though you're seeing it over and over again at the show that's just because there must have been a big batch or a lot of these vendors do buy from wholesalers so they might be getting it from the same people and that's why you see a lot of but sometimes they just go out and then they're extremely hard to find so this, for, for my, my viewers that like to follow me in my collection, this is a must-have. If you can come across one of these, it's a great one for your collection. Now, right next to it, it is amazing Oncidium. This was a gift from my friends over at MS Orchids. They have some of the most beautiful Philanopsis. I will show you later on in this video how amazing the Philanopsis flowers are from this place. They're just so healthy. But this was a gift they gave me uh, in Christmas when I passed by. I went to go buy some gifts for some friends and they wanted to gift me this as a Christmas gift. And look how beautiful this flower is. And this is an Oncidium Hilo Firecracker Lucky Strike. I wonder if it has anything to do with Hilo Hawaii, because I know that's where they do the, the, inner, the um, orchid shows and most of the great nurseries are are in that area so I wonder if that has anything to do and right next to it is a beautiful spike that's about to show us an amazing display of blooms and that I will show you guys as soon as it happens so right here let's cross over to this side is my partner's Brasavala nodosa this is a species and I got to tell you guys when this flower uh, releases fragrance at night it is absolutely delicious <laughs> it's such a sweet delicious smell and it just keeps on this is this one just opened yesterday this one right here that's why it's so fresh looking and it's got some more coming out there in the back there's another spike and i believe i saw another one last night it's just i guess this is the, this cold snap really did a a good thing for them now my Angrecum Crestwood, <laughs> sorry, a bug was right on my, <laughs> my arm. 
My Angrecum Crestwood this year has been absolutely spectacular. It is like a beautiful display of fireworks. Look at these dragon head looking flowers, how gorgeous they are. And they've been blooming now for many weeks. Look at that, it's just gorgeous. And this is another one that is a night fragrance uh, orchid. And it just, at night, let me see if I have the tag. I know I have it, here we go. This is great. I won't be doing too much editing. That means I could release the video faster. I'm trying to do this simpler because that, it takes a while to release my video sometimes and it's just not too practical. So this is another Angrecum, but this is a Loei. Hold on, let me, I have it here. Leonis, I mean, not Loei. Let's do it like this. And this one too is an amazing, amazing fragrant flower. I just love the way it smells at night. I purposely make it a point to come here after like eight o'clock and just stick my nose in there. <laughs> and this year she gave me four flowers. One already left. This one is like pretty much gone. It's just hanging on to the other flower. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, it's, she's gone. But it is a very giving um, orchid. And every season it always shoots several flowers. So if you guys don't have that one in your collection, that's another must. Now I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to cross over to here because this beautiful, beautiful Vanda Ben fragrance, I forgot to mention her in my haul. This was one of the ones I got in the haul. I forgot to mention two major <laughs> purchases and one of them was the largest. I don't even know how I forgot. So I'll show you guys in a bit, but look how beautiful the colors of this Ben fragrance is. And the flowers are already kind of on the way out, but still that pungent fragrance is coming through. So I got this at Udeli's and Udeli's, this was their first time uh, at the show having a booth at the show so congratulations that's a awesome awesome thing for you guys and i walked in and they had three ben fragrance and i fell in love with this one it just had a deeper color because here this is my other one which is also on its way out there's only like two flowers that are fresh but do you see how much lighter that is but then you have this one that has more of that purpley purpley color on the, on the petals on the vein you know those little veins it's, I don't know if it's going to show in the film very well. But anyways, this, this was one of the purchases that I forgot to mention. I left it out. Here, here's the name. Vanda Ben Fragrance. And now right next to it. Ta -ta -ta -tum, this was another beautiful gift from MS Orchids. This is a Rincon stylus. Now I don't have this one. I'm going to have to put it underneath. I don't have the actual tag for it. And she gifted it to me because it was closed. I had just received a bunch and she says, here, take one. And it's a surprise, uh, surprise flower because each one is different. So when I got this, I was like, wow, I don't have anything like this because now I'm going to transit from here. I'm going to show you what is also in bloom. That's Rincon stylus. And, um, it's, a lot of different types <laughs> but anyways i was very happy this is an extremely fragrant flower if you guys don't own a rincon stylus and you love fragrance this is definitely one of those flowers or should i say orchids that you need in your collection because it fills the air with fragrance now i've heard some people they think it's too pungent it's too strong i personally like it but i do get what they mean because it is a very very strong fragrance so if you're sensitive that might be a little too much Ooh, sorry, didn't make, mean to make you guys dizzy. So my cone, my chandelier, as I like to call it, my Rincon Stylus chandelier, it's now just starting to bloom. It's not completely open, but look at these flowers. See, these are, are similar to ones I just showed you, but a lot more purple. And I just bought a bunch of uh, magazines uh, from the American Orchid Society at the show. And one of the covers, Teresita actually bought two of them by mistake, my friend Terry. And she gifted me one and it has the same exact Rincon stylus on the cover. 
So I opened it up. I started reading up on it. I actually haven't started reading up on the Rincon Silas because I had another article on the Ludemitiana <laughs> Catlia. And I got into the article and I, have, I still haven't gone to this. So this, my friends, has been four years or five years in the making. I put all these together with Laz. We had no idea what they were going to be. We bought a box of these at Santini Orchids. And um, it was just a surprise. So we got lots of different ones. Look at this one, how beautiful. Now it did get a little beaten up by the cold. I didn't move a lot of things. I left them out here. It went uh, down to like in the 40s. So I did notice some yellowing of some of the leaves. But by the most part, everything seems to be looking really good. I cannot complain. It could have been much worse because I had no idea it was going to go down that low. I figured it was probably in the low 50s and they can handle that. But it went down in the low 40s. And surprisingly enough, a lot of things fared well. Now look at that. Look at this Alba. Oh, it's just gorgeous. I love this. And so I'm thinking about putting the newcomer somewhere around here there's a space there and there's a space there so i still haven't figured out which part which of those two spaces oh how can i miss you you're down here i didn't even see you you gorgeous thing you look at you all regal sorry the chandelier is on the chain so it moves very easily <laughs> It's purposely done that way so you can spin it around and check out all the flowers. But look at that, how pretty. I think this is what they call the cartoon red. Yeah, this is a cartoon red is what they call it, when it has those kind of like blotchy. So I'm going to move along because there is a lot to show. Right next to it is my volcano trick volcano queen. Hold on. And I also got this at Santini. This was also a purchase that I got a, hey Morris, how are you buddy? Good morning. I know, it's such a great morning for us, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I know, but you know, we do what we can with what, the time we have. <laughs> oh, I can't with him. <laughs> so anyway, this, this uh, volcano trick I got at Santini and it's just absolutely stunning. You guys know how much I love cranberry and yellow. Those two tones together are just so regal. It's, it's purples are regals, and this combination is also very regal. And what I did was, I, when I went to Santini, I decided to buy three of these and plant them all together. See? In this cone. And in less than a year, look at the roots, guys. You know this is a happy orchid. It's got that spike in the back. It's got these already open, and the one, this was the first one to open, and it was a big old pond pond but you know it's already aging so it starts coming out but it's giving me so many blooms as well as new uh, shoots here you go let me show you a beautiful angle of this all oh, those colors are dreamy <laughs> all right down here I'm gonna have to bring this Leon Singh down because she deserves to be viewed sorry guys I mean just I didn't like I said I didn't think this through very much <laughs> here we go we'll use my bulb of philanopsis as a just for now all right there we go this is good lighting too all right stop swinging guys <laughs> all right so this is my Liam Singh. Now I do have a tag for this, but it's somewhere in here. I got this at Banyan, but it's a tiny little tag and it's hiding in here somewhere. <laughs> there we go. La M Singh. I'll call it Liam Singh, but it's Lam Singh. Oh, probably butchering the name. But anyway, this is an incredibly fragrant flower. Oh, I just had to take a whiff to remember what it's like a sweet lemony smell. But I love, 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 love this combination as well of color. You know, if cranberry and yellow is one of my, it's my favorite. This is probably my second favorite. This pink and yellow combination is just so pretty. It's like the Annie Bell, you know, the Annie Bell is in reverse. It's this yellow and then the, the lip has that, I mean, this pink and the, or fuchsia, 
and this the lip has a yellow so I am in love with these color combinations and Lime Sing always gives me a lot of blooms and they do last for a long time if you notice down here this when you guys buy a Vanda if you see a lot of these dried um, spikes that means this is a very giving plant and as you can see I've had her for two years and look at everything she's given me in two years she really really is a beautiful and this was a pick from Ben because he had some there and he said do you mind if it has no flowers yet and I, he goes because I have one back there that I think it's going to be a really strong bloomer for you and I say sure I don't mind if it has no flowers and I had to wait for it to bloom but then when it started oh my, so I have the very I think it had these two blooms already but then all these are the other ones it gave me since I've had her so I truly truly love this orchid it's one of my top listed ones all right let's see what we have here oh yes let's see you you're starting to open this is one of the largest flowers I have in here let me see how I can do this because the lighting is still too oh here we go the lighting is so early in the morning that it kind of creates a lot of shadows so I'm trying to get as bright as possible so anyways guys this is hold on because it's a long name it's an Ascascenda I'm gonna have to reverse my hands you guys have no idea <laughs> the difficult <laughs> difficulties to record these videos it look we make them look simple but they're not <laughs> Ascascenda Saxamaran spots cross with a Vanda doctor and neck I've had this for a very long time So this one I also got at Ben Yong's. This one was one of the first, I think first Vandas that I bought from him, from Ben. And um, it's been a very giving Vanda. Now the poor thing has suffered a lot. <laughs> and I have noticed that my Vandas, not all because a lot of them look great, but my Vandas are starting to get what I call the palm tree effect where it gets very thin here and you only have these little things. Now, it does continue, as you can see, it continues blooming very well, but it just doesn't aesthetically look nice and it doesn't look as healthy. And this was due to the cold snap. And before that, it had the other cold snap from last year, so it lost a bunch of leaves. So I don't know, honestly, if I'm gonna be continuing to buy these kind of Vandas. I'm probably gonna stick to the smaller Vandas because they do much better like these. We're gonna go right into these like this Xena that I also got from my friend Ben at Ben Yang's. And this one is a deliciously fragrant flower. It's a small, um, compacted Vanda, as you can see. And do you see the difference between the health? And yes, this is a little yellow leaf, but this again is from the cold. Like I said, it's very normal for that to happen to Vandas that you keep outdoors, especially if you don't bring them inside but look at all the flowers guys she is one happy orchid and um, i got this about a year ago i went shopping with um, teresita and another viewer debbie and uh that day i think we call i called blanca and she hopped right on over and laz was with us and we were all having such a great day with this. it was raining outside a lot <laughs> but we ended up taking some treasures home now this one here is a beauty as well. This is from RF Orchids. And I got this at the Redland show last year, or two years ago, actually, uh, right, right after the pandemic. It was literally like when things started to open up. It was the first show the Redlands had, and I fell in love with this. This is a Vanda Kent Spires. Hold on, let me see. Come on, buddy. No, there we go. Vanda Kent Spires, and that's the cross with one of my favorites, which is Danny Soniana, which by the way, I finally got one from Smiley, which are beautiful flowers. So this one I got, and um, Michael over at RF Orchids told me, you know, we don't know how the flowers are gonna look because they all open differently. Like some are darker, some are lighter. Um, the one that they had on display was gorgeous. It had spots, but this one, as you can see the spots, you see them there in the petals. 
Ooh, come on. No, 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 no. Hold on. Let's do this. There we go. Do you see them there? They're very diffused. So he told me some of them do come out with the pronounced spots, but other ones come out more like a blend, like an ombre. So, you know, as we all say, the orchid tears, there's no such thing as an ugly orchid. <laughs> so that one became, became mine immediately because I was like, you know what? I like surprises. <laughs> now, right next to it, it's this gorgeous Vandopsis parisii, also a gift from Teresita. And here's a tag. It's from Lady Vanda, Ascacenda Guachia Long. And she is one tough mama to bloom. You have to feed this Vanda. If you guys want this, it's a gorgeous Vanda, but you have to commit to the hard, long, the hard work. <laughs> no, it's not hard work. You just have to commit to feeding them at least every week no less than every week or more if you can feed them twice like this one i've been feeding a lot i did seize the feeding when it got cold because you don't want to do that but once things started warming up you can start feeding and if you're here in miami it's feeding time baby i already did my feeding two days ago my very first feeding of the season now that doesn't mean that if it, we get another cold snap that i continue feeding i will stop but now that it's this warm, as you guys can see, I'm in my tank top and shorts because it's just too hot. <laughs> well, it's not hot. It's just warming up and it's perfect for the Vanda. So now is the time if you're in Miami or you're in a climate like this one, which is reading upper 70s, humidity is slightly high. Go and feed them babies. They are hungry. <laughs> now this Tulumia, which took forever to open, actually blooms for a very long time this one is from tan from spring waters my buddy mr tan who calls me wilson <laughs> he's determined he knows my name he just likes bugging me Girac rainbow hybrid tulumia the the, the tulumia is gone <laughs> but anyways i got this from him uh, about two years ago and this was one of his special ones he told me that this was a special cross and that um, it was slightly bigger than the other ones. So I said, you know what? It's got my two favorite tones together, cranberry and yellers. <laughs> and I'll just share this one right here because she's starting to open and she is a beauty. This one I also got from Tan. Most of my Tulumias, I think all of them actually are from him. Look at that, how pretty. And this one, I don't know what the name of this one is. Let me see right back here. Chirac Rainbow, uh, Siku Vanessa and Catherine Wilson. And this was a piece that I did a while back, which by the way, I learned from this piece that you do not use any moss on your Tulumias. You keep them free of moss and just free root them like that because you see this and here, this one, this one just died. They started getting root rot. So Tan was the one who told me, no, take the, as soon as you can, take the moss off. So when I got home, that's the first thing I did. I took the moss off and they're doing much better now. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. This one is finally starting to open. Let's see if I can get a good caption only because the sun is behind it. But yeah, that's a pretty good caption. Here, let me see. I got this at Po Pao Nurseries. They are, I'm sorry, not Popal. They had this, but I got this from Josh, Josh, Joshua Jones from the Orchid Den. And he does, I'm sorry that it's moving so much. I'm holding it with my other hand. Um, he does sell orchids aside from doing amazing pottery. And uh, I hope he brings some of it uh, on Friday so I can show you guys. It's really pretty, the new stuff. But he had this in bud and he had one open and I was like, <gasps> Look at the shape of that. I need it. I need it in my life. And this is, hold on. It, the tag is very rubbed off, but if you Google some of the words in there, it'll come up. Paphio Petalum Super Suck, I think, or Sack. <laughs> super Sack. Eureka has an um, award of merit. Cross with a, don't know what that means, pie. Pumpkin pie. H. Singering cross with sibs, so it's crossed with its siblings. 
So anyways, that's a gorgeous Paphio Petalum, and I have it here in my little Paphio Petalum counter. As you can see, they love this spot. And for you guys that want to start, and by the way, this one's just about to start. This one's fragrant. This is a Joyce Hasagua. <laughs> and I got this from Tong, from Spring Waters as well. And look at the leaf, how beautiful this leaf is. It has such great patterns. I really, really adore these leaves. One of my favorite leaves in the paths, in the path world. All right, so let's see. Let's, let's go to the, speed this up so it's not, you know what? I always forget to show you guys this one because she's on a tree. I'm starting to put orchids on the back side of the trees. And this beauty here, I think this is what they call a Catlia chocolate something. This one does not have a tag, so if you guys recognize it, but look at the colors on this. And I never smell the fragrance on her. She doesn't really have a lot of fragrance, but boy, is she vibrant. Let me see. Kind of like morning sun and windy. <laughs> But anyways, I put her here because she was not doing good at all. And I took her out of the pot. And this was the very first cat Leah that I put on a tree. And look at her. You cannot tell that this cat Leah was dying at one point at all. She is so healthy. And look at all the roots have that, how they've taken to the tree. They accepted it. The tree likes her. She likes it. <laughs> And as you can see, I'm starting to do these little environments here under my trees just to create a, a pretty uh, a botanical effect. And yes, my trumpet flower is in bloom. Guys, this flower at night, it is one of the most incredible, incredible fragrances you can experience. Now, this is a very poisonous plant. This is not something that... If you have pets, I have cats, but my cats are smart. They're not going to go chewing on this. But um, dogs sometimes do. So you got to be very careful if you have this and you have dogs. Make sure you don't have the type of puppies that like to gnaw on everything because this will kill them. It's highly, highly poisonous. Um, it's not poisonous to us. We can touch it. Just some people consume, I hear, like a tea out of the flower. Or it's a hallucinogen. And many people have actually died from it. So I don't know. I don't understand that. <laughs> you know, why would you want to do something like that? But anyway, I guess, you know, some people like to live on the edge. <laughs> Here is what I forgot to show you guys from Fantastic Ferns. Somebody had asked me, a viewer, and I know I haven't answered you back. I've been very busy, but like I said, I do read your comments. But not all the time I, have, I can answer them. But you had asked me what kind of fern did I have sitting in the back. Well, it's called a pyrosia. And there's different ones. This is a Pyrosia Splendens. And I paid, I think it was 75 for this, which I thought was a great, great price for them, the size of this plant. And the bottom, this brown that you see here, those are spurs. And it releases those spurs, and then other ferns may grow on your trees. Now, you're probably wondering, oh, so if you put it there, it's gonna get from tree to tree. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping that it starts growing in different trees because it's so tropical looking and exotic and prehistoric. And the way that it grows, you know, it doesn't grow down, it grows up showing you all the spurs. And then on the top of the flower, it has a protective fuzz. You see that? That protects the plants from pests or other insects. So Sally over at Fantastic Ferns at the Tamiami show told me don't don't rub the white off. Leave it alone because that protects it. At first I was like, wait a minute, is this scales? Because <laughs> it so looks like it, right? But it's not. It's not scales at all. She says, no, these aren't scales. That actually protects the plant from the scales. So keep the keep the, the fuzzy stuff on. But it's a beauty and it came in that wood and I think it's a perfect fit for this environment. What do you guys think? I love the shape, how it comes out of the tree. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, now let's go to quick tent. This is my quick tent. It's probably one of the best things I've ever put here for my orchids. It is a 
amazing. The way it protects, it protected all my orchids in here from the cold snap. Oh, it's so windy today. And here is a full view of how it's coming along. It's, if you guys have been following me, you know that it's getting fuller and fuller. My sitting area, <laughs> it's becoming a, a holding, a holding area for, um, for my orchids and Morris loves it in here. And I have to be careful. He gravitates to this plant so much. There's something about this that attracts him. And I have to be careful because he will break it rubbing against it. He keeps rubbing it and rubbing it. I don't know what it, what it has. Oh, I got a spider on me. Come on, buddy, get away. Hold on. There she goes. All right. So as I was telling you, this is my Philanopsis area. And everything is blooming beautifully. A lot of these fowls are, should I say, moth orchid. I keep calling it the moth flower. It's not moth flower. I stand corrected. And a viewer of mine corrected me. And I'm like, I know. You're absolutely right. I don't know why I keep calling it the moth flower. So the moth orchid, or at least that's how I was told it's correct. Um, most of them I get them from MS orchids because they do have a lot of different varieties and their prices are so incredible. Now, there's another one, there's another amazing uh, nursery down here in Chrome called a Heavenly Garden. And a lot of the ones down there that are now starting to bloom and back here are from Heavenly Garden. Like that one, this one here that's starting to spike. This one here is from Heavenly Garden. Look at this, guys. Is this not like one of the most stunning Philanopsis moth orchids that you will ever lay eye on? Look at that. And I've had this one for a while. I got this one from Bill over at a Heavenly Garden. If you guys decide to visit, say hello to Bill. He's the owner. Super nice guy. Tell him I sent you. He'll be very happy to hear that. And he had these in his uh, area in the back about three years ago. He was showing me some special stuff he had and I saw these and I'm like, Bill, I need this. <laughs> he goes, you want one? I go, yes. <laughs> so I bought one of these. I can't remember what I paid, but look at the leaves on, on this Philanopsis. It's just insane. So anyways, let's go back to this one. Now these I've shown before, but they are doing so good. This is my chocolate antelope. Very difficult to film, by the way, because they're so dainty and, and small. And if you have a screen in the background, the iPhone, I don't know what it is. It loves to focus on screens. Like if there's a screen, back, see, if there's a screen background, it'll just switch to that and show you the, there we go. Oh, I hope they get it right <laughs> with the focusing. But look how gorgeous that flower is. I think this is the best caption I've ever gotten of this flower because it's very difficult to capture. It's just so, it has so many twirls and curls <laughs> that it doesn't like to focus on it. But it is a beautiful dendrobium. Speaking of beautiful dendrobiums, check out this dendrobium. I don't know if it's buccal or buckle, but this is a beauty. I've had already several people ask me for, <laughs> for cuttings and cakeys. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, I should just start reproducing, which the first thing I did when I brought it home, it did have some cakeys. I had two cakeys. One of them was just like a stick and the other one was a perfectly shaped two leaf uh, cakey. And I took and I said, you know what? I'm going to start reproducing because honestly, I haven't seen this anywhere. And I go to a lot of shows. But I have not seen this anywhere. And so, of course, I took the cakey out. And that was the first thing I did. And that was the second one. I don't know if that's even going to produce anything. But you know what? I always say it's not dead until it's shriveled, brown, and dried out. <laughs> and this is not shriveled, brown, or dried out. And the roots are very healthy. So we're going to see. Let's see what happens. It's just a test. All right. And down here is my Bulbophyllum abreviatum. Here we go. Thank you, Equagenera, for your sticker labels. They make it so much easier for me to show when I'm showing your flowers or your plant. And these little suckers, they look like Dutch slippers or Dutch clogs. 
Aren't those so cute? Just don't ever put your nose to it. I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> because it's very intense. It's that of like, um, oh, I, don't, I don't know. It's just, it's nasty. It's a very strong fragrance. But um, that's what bubble films are known for. You know, they're known for their stinkiness. And that's what makes them so unique. There we go. I was trying to get into the telephoto lens. Because the telephoto lens is it's way better. But I don't know why sometimes it just does all these crazy things. But look at what a pretty flower, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. And these little things. Let me see if they move. No, they're not. Yeah, the little little lips that trap the bugs see him and she is just one heavy bloomer look at that all those new blooms so i decided to put all my paphiopetalums most androbiums and oh i did not want to forget this and and my all my bubble films in here it seems to be the magic spot for a lot of them this dendrobium here she was hold on let me get myself comfortable here for so i can show oh sorry so I can show it properly. This dendrobium here has the most unique little flowers. Now, this this orchid, when it's in a very mature orchid, it is a spectacular show because you see all these these strings of orchids just blooming, and it ha they're very fragrant. By the way, you put your nose up to it; it's extremely. It's almost like a honey. It's like a honeysuckle. Oh, it's so so sweet. So this one hadn't bloomed for me in quite a while. And I put her in here. She wasn't, she was, you know, touch and go. But look at that. Now, the, the film, that the white that you see here, that's just calcium from my well water. But these leaves are very, if I always show this as an example. Here we go. I'll show you how healthy the leaves are. Unfortunately, our water is very high in calcium. So it makes these leaves very ghost, ghosted. <laughs> but see, they're very healthy. So I'm thinking about probably adding an extra tank of salt. So maybe it softens the water a little bit more, but I have to check and see how good that is for my orchids. So anyways, it gave me this long, beautiful strand that is still in the process of opening more blooms. And it's just, nature is just amazing. Look at that, guys. And Morris seems to think so too. Oops. Sorry guys, I'm here hitting everything. Now, this is one that I showed before that I heard from Brethren, from Philip at Brethren, that he had so many people calling after I showed it wanting this. Now, I gotta tell you guys, and I asked him and I said, listen, I need to know if you, if you don't have any, so I can let my viewers know, you know, they don't have them yet. He is gonna have them, I think he said for next year, they have seedlings. So these were not for sale. This was just something that he wanted to gift me and the orchid doc for the holidays when we went to go visit. We went crazy when we saw this. And there it is, a foul hung hensis. It's a beautiful species. And I learned that this is the one fowl that you want to mount on wood and you don't want to put any moss on it. You don't want anything on the root because the roots form part of the photosynthesis and it only produces one to two leaves. This one has three leaves, but from what I researched, it says one to two leaves is what you see most of the time. It, it's not really, it's almost like a ghost orchid, um, but it still keeps those leaves. But it's just a beautiful little flower. I'm obsessed, obsessed with this flower. And as soon as I hear that some, that brethren, that Philip has him, or if I find him elsewhere, which I don't know because I, honestly, I haven't seen him elsewhere. I will let you guys know, and I will buy several for myself as well, <laughs> because I would love to have a bunch of these in one mount to showcase all these flowers. They're just so pretty. I love halos around flowers. And as you guys know, this, this has been blooming for quite a while since my video with, um, oh, with Orchid Doc when we went to go see Brethren's. And speaking of Brethren's, oh, these are already on the way out. I just got this and I think I smell something. Hold on, I thought it wasn't fragrant. Ah, oh, it has a slight fragrance, it's nice. It's like a little fruit loopy.
but very, very light. But look at this. This was from Philip's own personal private collection. And he's making space. If you guys haven't watched my video at their greenhouse, they uh, invited us in uh, as a private tour. They're not open to the public. They do everything online or at shows. So if you ever want anything that I show from them, give them a call or reach out to the website. And most likely they can help you and send you the flower to your home. And so I saw this and I'm like, oh, Philip, what is that? He goes, oh, that's my own. I have to let her go. And it hurts so much because I really wanted to go to a safe home. And, you know, when I get it, when you give up, when not give up, when you have to give away your, your plants due to space, you want them to go to a good place. You want that the person that takes it, takes as good care as you did. So I said, what if I take it out of your hands? <laughs> He's like, that'll make me very happy because <laughs> I know she's going to a good home. So anyways, Phil, if you're watching, she's loving it here. And she's next to my other ones that I've purchased from, uh, from our buddies at Crawl Smith. And look at this leaf, guys. Look at this. This was a gift from Hayden last year on my, on my one year anniversary at the Fairchild Gardens. And he gifted me this. This is one of the most beautiful Philanopsis flowers I've seen it's so colorful but the leaves are just <laughs> amazing it is crossed with gigantia so you are gonna get that oh let me do a little quickie here to my lipstick plant boom hi guys my little Muppets <laughs> it's still going strong great gift from Roxy from orchid 365 oh you know what before I, I close the channel I gotta show you guys this it's not blooming yet, but this is going to be spectacular. Look at my Afro Orchid. It is about to shoot so many incredible flowers. She really, really likes it in here. And then my Shilleriana, that poor thing, she got burned with a cold snap. But look, she's got three spikes. She's really, really happy. My little girl, I'm so sorry I left you out there in the cold. Immediately I brought her in here, but she did get a little bit of cold damage. But she'll pull through. She has these two new leaves, and I'm sure in the spring she's going to push out some more. So the fact that she gave me these three spikes and they're so healthy looking, oh boy, that is going to be a show. That I promise you. Because <laughs> Shilleriana's, Philanopsis, um, Shilleriana's, that species, when it, as it gets older... It gives you these long, long spikes filled with beautiful, beautiful orchids. All right, guys, I think that's it for now. Let's turn this around. All right, guys, that is it. That is the end of today's programming. I hope you liked all the blooms I had to show you. There was so many great stuff. I just didn't want it to go too long because, you know, they do wither. And then I missed the opportunity to show you what I have in bloom. But there's a lot more coming up. I can't wait to show you. Plus, some of the things I showed you today are still half blooming. So once they're in full bloom, super show. So anyways, let me move aside as I always do. And that is the Ophi's Orchid and Plant Festival this month of January 28th and 29th. They will be uh, bringing some of the top, top vendors that were actually at the Tamiami show. Like Carl Smith, Lady Vanda, Spring Waters, uh, Pam from Orchids in Bloom. I mean, list goes on and on. It is a really good show. I won't be able to be there Saturday. Unfortunately, I do have to open my salon. It's our busy days, so I usually miss out on Saturdays, which are the best days. But I will try to be there on Sunday to do some filming. So for you guys that couldn't make it, I'll bring it to your home. So with that said, Josh will be down. So the Orchid Den will be part of the show he will be selling his pots his beautiful beautiful new pots that are just like stunning and on friday this show saturday and sunday he likes to stop by and then do a live we already did one it was very successful a lot of people requested more of it so we will be bringing it back to you so if you guys are just hanging out on friday after five o'clock i don't know the exact time because i do work friday so i don't know what time i'll be getting here so I'm thinking it's probably going to be a little bit later than five o'clock, but just keep an eye out or put your notification bell so that way it alerts you because as soon as we go live, it will alert you and let you know that we're on. So it's going to be a question and answers. We don't really have any subject matter in particular. We're leaving it up to you guys, the viewers, to ask away. So please join us 
let's hang out and have a good time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, guys. So I will bid you farewell from now, but I will be back. I promise. <laughs> My name is Nelson. You're watching Nature Now. And remember to always, always keep it green. <laughs> See you guys next time.